Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about timed grazing today and the impact it's making and hopefully will make on ranching across Utah and the West. Joining us for conversation are people who are very experienced at this particular topic. One of the permittees of the Three Creek uh, grazing area, Dale Lamborn. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. And uh, we also have Troy Forrest, who is the GIP manager. I think that stands for Grazing Improvement Program for the Utah Department of Agriculture and Food. Thanks for joining us today. You bet. Thank you. When the, w w this concept was first discussed with you, Dale, as a permittee, did you just go, whoa, wait a minute? Or what was your response to it? Well, I think there were, there were some critical concerns I had going in. Uh, first of all, you've got to get 36 permittees to ag agree and jump on board of the plan. Uh, you've got to get BLM and Forest Service to work together, which is not always easy to do. And you've got to have a plan that makes sense uh, both for the resource, for the permittees, for the agencies. And so, yeah, it was a, a big challenge going into it. But the amazing thing is as we've got everybody on board and, and we're there. Who came up with the idea originally to say, let's do, let's repeat Deseret Land and Livestock and let's put it out there with some smaller allotments? Well, it was Alvin Shaw that came to Bill Hopkin and I. Alvin's a permittee on the allotments. Uh, he, 40 years ago, worked at Deseret as a cowboy and had rolled that range and saw the condition he was in and then he had moved to Wyoming and run a family ranch for about 25 years. Came back to Rich County and in about 2010, went on a tour on Deseret and saw the marked change in the results, in the ground cover, in the wildlife that were there, in everything about Deseret. And so he came to us and he says, uh, you know, they did that there, why can't we do it on public lands? And so with Alvin's help, we got together with BLM and Forest Service and started having the conversation. Okay, so I, I, I'm very, we're very blessed to have agencies like the BLM and the Forest Service around, but typically they're kind of a, a very rigid organization. What was their first reaction when you say, okay, I want you to do something you've never done before and, uh, and let these ranchers group stuff together? Well, they were pretty good, I'll be honest. They had good people there. They uh, knew there were some resource problems in the area and they were looking for ways to address them. And so we approached them with this and they said, wow, that'll be hard. And they started talking about NEPA and the time it'll take. And, you know, he says, well, tell us worst case scenario, how long is it going to take to do this? And they said, well, if everything goes just wrong, it'll take three or four years. It's now been almost eight. <laughs> so okay. uh, that, part's so that part's pretty predictable. <laughs> but, uh, but surprisingly, they were very amenable. And... Uh, and the hard part, hardest part, or one of the hardest parts, is they've had to be amenable four or five times because they've had four or five managers in each agency in that period of time. And each time a new manager comes in, you almost have to start from scratch and get them to buy off and be willing to, to move forward. And that's part of the extra time that we took. Was it scary? Was it really scary for you to think about turning in your allotment to the BLM? Or is your Forest Service or BLM, or do you have a little bit of both? I here? have some of both. Uh -huh. And we didn't really turn it into them. What we did was form an LLC. And so all 36 permittees are now part of the Three Creeks Grazing LLC. You know, you have to put a lot of trust in these other 35 guys, don't you? Well, you, we've got a lot of trust in, in not only the other permittees, uh, but we've got to trust the agencies. Uh, we've got to trust the research that says it's going to be a good thing for the resource. Because in Rich County... Uh, agriculture is still king in terms of, of our economy oh, yeah. and uh, we are very dependent on grazing on public lands. Uh, it's the only way that cow-calf production is feasible in Rich County and so if we're looking for our kids and our grandkids to continue a, a way of life that we absolutely love, that we want to pass down from generation to generation, we got to make sure that we're doing the best we can for the resource so that BLM and Forest Service are going to allow grandkids to run cows on that. So 
when Deseret Livestock started this, they actually found that they were able to support wildlife better, have better range conditions because they were moving the cattle more frequently, mm -hmm. and it actually allowed them to increase the number of cattle they ran on their property. So they actually saw a net gain in the cow-calf uh, numbers that were, they were putting out on the range. Am I correct in that? You are correct. They almost doubled their stocking range. So. I'm not sure we'll get that. <laughs> you know, that's a hope that we have. But if we can keep from losing AUMs, if we can keep from losing time, uh, it's a net benefit to us. And we know that once we get in this system that we'll be more drought proof, that those cows won't have to come home early. And in Rich County, your cows going home early is a big deal because that's that much more hay you're going to have to buy. Is this a more secure way for you as a permit holder to ranch? It puts a lot of responsibility on us to make sure this works. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Three Creeks LLC, we're going to be monitoring ourselves to a big extent. I mean, we're still going to report to Forest Service and BLM. But if we get lazy, if we don't rotate properly, if we don't get cows moved when they should be moved, you know, that, that's all going to negatively impact this. So uh, we've put a lot of trust in each other and committed that we're going to make this work. And, and I think that's an important point that Dell makes is they're stepping up. Uh, this isn't easier. I mean, it's easier. We've got some of the allotments now of the 10 that are included in this where they turn them out May 15th and they don't go back and check really for the most part until September 15th when those cows come home. That's all going to change. They're going to have to be there on a daily, weekly basis making the moves. And it's going to cost up front because Cows and calves are going to get separated, they're going to have doggies, there's going to be some issues and the first several years the cows may not gain more weight. And, and we've tried to be upfront about that and I think Dell would say that we have been, that, that there's some risks associated with this and some, they're putting skin in the game. If you put all your cows together, and I don't know if they're literally going to be together in the same pasture, but if, you, if all permit holders have their herd together, can't you guys help each other move them around? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And and actually, there's going to be, as I mentioned earlier, about 3,200 head of cows. There, there's going to be basically two herds, so there'll be 16 in each herd. Right. And yeah, and, and we've always helped each other. You don't go out and just move yours. When you go to move from pasture to pasture, you move everybody's, and, and that's one of the great parts about it. I mean... Uh, as independent as ranchers are, and they're probably, they're way more independent than almost any agricultural group, I think. Yeah, uh, I agree. Is, there's a certain camaraderie of, of taking care of each other, moving cows together, being on your horse. And, and as I mentioned before, I don't want to get all sentimental about it, but having your kids with you while you do that, uh, pass on that way of life. Because let's, moving cows with a bunch of other ranchers is a lot more fun than irrigating with dad you know if, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, <laughs> if you're going to make them love this you got to have some of the fun that, that goes with it no that's absolutely true and you know the thing is that that is such a consistent message so you guys living in the city and you keep hearing these ranchers all over the state talk about the way of life and their family and a great way to raise their kids the, this these are not talking points that are coming from like some political action group these guys really feel this so uh how are you going to divide up the if this goes back to the theoretical question. Sure. Your, your conditions approve on the range to a point where the Forest Service, the BLM, look at it and say, yeah, much as we'd like to not say yes, you can run more cows. How are you going to divide up the growth between the, the allotment holders? Well, we're in on a percent. You know, each of us have so many permits now, and that's a percentage of the total. So if we get more, it will be distributed on a percentage of the total based on your percentage existing. So are you rebranding them as uh, as LLC? You're no. keeping your own cows within Absolutely. the lot. You're just Absolutely. sharing the ground, not, right. The, not right. the stock. Yeah, all of the brands are registered by the LLC, and so they'll be branded the different brands. Otherwise, it'd be a nightmare when you came home to try to sort back everybody's cows yeah. and calves. Gee, that Lamborn guy, he ended up with all the skinny, <laughs> all the skinny cows. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. That might create some problems. So no, it's everybody maintains ownership of their livestock. So there are other guys out here, there are other groups of ranchers that are looking at this right now to go, hmm, what's the one thing you want to tell them? I think uh, from my perspective, it's based on trust. Uh, we trusted Troy and his group as they came in and, and uh, initiated the idea. Uh, we've put a lot of trust in each other. We've trusted the, the uh, 
agencies. But, you know, Covey, a number of years ago, wrote a book called The Speed of Trust. And it, trust makes things happen faster, and it makes things happen better. And so I think that, that base level of trust between the permittees, the agencies, GIP, all the people involved is critical to this even getting off the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think traditionally we've not trusted each other enough. And if we're going to move forward, benefit the resource, we got to uh, trust each other selectively. What was Reagan's old saying? Trust, trust and verify. And verify. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where we're at. You know, I would just say that this is an opportunity for, for ranchers. Uh, it's been a war of attrition in the West. You know, in 1934, the Taylor Grazing Act was passed, and, and at that time, we had a set level of grazing. In, since 1960 in Utah, we've lost about two-thirds of the grazing capacity that we had on public lands. And we've, we've got to stop that war, that attrition in this industry if we're going to keep these rural communities in these small counties in Utah viable. And this is a way forward. This is a way that can be ecologically and economically sustainable to where we don't have to see a continued reduction in numbers. We can go out, we can be good stewards, which takes more effort on the part of the permittees, but we get better results. We get that clean water. We get the wildlife that everybody wants in abundance. We get those values that everybody wants from their public lands and, and should get, and we still maintain the economic viability of our ranchers. We can make profit by removing that fuel. That's a good thing. It's got to be a good thing. If we can't, you know, we can't always incur costs to make things better. If we can make money and make things better at the same time, which is what this will do, that's a win-win for everybody, is it not? It really, it really is. Well, congratulations to you. Thank, for, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back with the county seat. We'll continue our conversation about time grazing, and we will look at the people that started it up in Rich County and see exactly how well it's benefited them as we take a tour of desert land and livestock when we come back. <music>